Hello ladies and gents and everyone in between. This is a short review of the third week of 2018. So, first things first, my Rainbow Witch shirt. I'm so excited, I love fandom. I will obviously put the link below to where you can get the shirt because everyone needs one. On to the news this week. As we know, Supergirl and Black Lightning uh, both had their premieres. Supergirl had the winter premiere. Black Lightning had the series premiere. Um, Supergirl, I just have a lot of my mixed feelings about. Uh, and <laughs> if you want to know more, I guess, uh, go watch my Supergirl videos that I post reactions to. Um, Black Lightning, so good. I'm so excited for the show. As we know, or as is, I think, common knowledge, Black Lightning's daughter in this, uh, also known as Thunder, uh, is a lesbian, but that was not mentioned at all in this first episode, which I don't mind, you know? We're getting to know them as a family, as characters, as people, you know? Her sexuality is not the most interesting, interesting thing about her. Um, but I'm excited because her uh, romantic interest is also a woman of color and I believe she's going to be bisexual and I hope that that um, is highlighted somehow um, because bisexual representation. Um, speaking of bisexual representation, in Grownish, Nomi, um, whose bisexuality I think has really been done pretty well, um, has a new boyfriend, I think, or someone, some guy she's going out with. Um, she was on a date with a girl who, when she, the girl found out that Nomi was a bisexual, she, you know, shot her down and was like, this is a phase, get over it, and maybe we can talk. Listen, bisexual erasure is one of my hot button topics, okay? <laughs> Bisexuality is real, bisexual people are real people. Even if they're in a heterosexual relationship, they're still bisexual. Even if they're in a homosexual relationship, they're still bisexual. Okay, so. Uh, but it comes out that Nomi's boyfriend is also bi. And, you know, an interesting kind of dynamic happens there because I think that, you know, for, I haven't uh, met any or really seen any bisexual men on in, in uh, representation and so you know I think a lot you know there's a sort of a double standard there for bisexual men versus bisexual women you know so this dude says he's bisexual he's messed around with dudes everyone's like what is that what so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out I hope that it does play out and that doesn't just, they don't just drop the ball on that because I think that that is an important conversation to have, you know, not only bisexual representation for women, but also bisexual representation, representation for men. And speaking of bisexual, the bold type got renewed. I'm so excited. The girl who plays Adina, Nicole Bushiri, has been uh, confirmed as a series season regular. I'm so excited because she is a just such a strong uh, woman who is a Muslim lesbian and unapologetic and just a really great character and I'm excited to see her relationship with um, Kat, see where that goes. If you don't watch a bold type, do it please. It is so good. Um, I, it's about women supporting women, you know, helping, you know, a, a, a higher up women, you know, CEOs helping and supporting women to fulfill their dreams. And it's what I uh, have heard and have adopted uh, a shine theory where, you know, if you shine on, if you shine the light on someone else, your light gets brighter, right? Everyone's light gets brighter. It's about women helping women, and it's so good. Uh, I also make reactions to that, so look out for that uh, in the summer, I believe. In kind of 
super bummer news. Uh, some uh, queer women shows were canceled. One Mississippi, I Love Dick, and uh, Take My Wife were all canceled. Um, I will be honest and say that I didn't watch any of those, um, but I did actually binge One Mississippi after I learned it was canceled, of course, right? Um, and it's really good. It's um, so honest and real, and it's a dark comedy, and it deals with a lot of serious shit that we need right now. And, you know, not only that, but um, I, all three of those shows um, have masculine of center lesbians, which is something, which is a demographic of that community that is very under, underrepresented. Um, so I challenge you, and something I'm challenging myself to do, is if something comes out, um, a piece of media, that you don't necessarily think you identify with or don't necessarily think um, might appeal to you, I say that you should, you know, if it's a movie, buy a ticket, but you don't have to go. We need to support um, queer content, content uh, from people of color, you know, so that we get more of it. Because if it's not, if it doesn't have the numbers, if it doesn't bring in the money, then they're not gonna be allowed to make it. So go out and support communities. And, um, you know, my rule is when watching a new show to give it at least three episodes. Okay, and if after three episodes, you're not into it, okay. But, you know, even if you're kind of on the fence, keep going. I made it through a season and a half of Brooklyn Nine-Nine before I was like, I love this show. So sometimes, you know, you just gotta go out there and support communities and be a good ally. Um, you know, whether it's your own community or a community that you wish to be an ally to, that's one of the best ways you can do it. But, in kind of, in better news, it, it seems that the year to come in this, the queerest year of all, is going to be pretty awesome um, in terms of queer content and also content from people of color um, in, on TV, you know, in, in movies and all sorts of media. Um, Autostraddle posted a list of uh, content to come. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of queer stuff, a lot of stuff from people of color, and um, a lot more trans people as well. Um, characters and actors, I'm really excited about that. Um, one of which, uh, let's see, uh, the uh, Grey's Anatomy uh, has a um, trans male character who they're taking very good care to, you know, write the story well and to kind of be, lead the way in, in positive representation for trans characters. You know, they're conscious about creating this character fully and, you know, again, his Sexual identity is not the most interesting thing about him. So I'll put uh, links to that list and links to an article um, about the Grey's Anatomy character. And I don't know if anyone's noticed, but RuPaul's Drag, Way, RuPaul's Drag Race has recently become pretty big. And so they're actually gonna start, they're actually going to make a movie starring a bunch of all-stars or standout um, queens from that and that's exciting that's really you know I feel like that's something that you know I'm gonna watch it see what's going on um, I don't know that much about it uh, there's an article that I'll link to below that talks a little bit about it um, and kind of a little bit about the plot stuff like that and um, also queer eye for the straight guy is coming back um, you know everyone remembers early 2000s um, five gay guys go and make over a straight man in his lifestyle and everything. That is coming back, um, and it's going to be a Netflix original series. I'll post the link to the article that also has the, the trailer within it. And it looks interesting. I think I'll watch it. Um, it has a more diverse cast, um, and yeah, so... 
It'll be interesting to see how that does. Congratulations news. Bria and Chrissy of Bria and Chrissy YouTube channel fame uh, finally got engaged and I'm so excited for them. Um, Chrissy won her revenge porn case and which she has fought so hard for and I'm so happy for her because revenge porn is absolutely horrible. And so, you know, they celebrated and Chrissy proposed to Bria and I'm so excited for them. So congratulations to them. Uh, and also Heather Matarazzo, I don't know if I said that right, of Princess Diaries fame, also got engaged. Um, and I, uh, I love following her. You should follow her on Twitter because she's really awesome. And so I'm excited um, for her coming up and her life with her wife. So congratulations to them. And finally, the GLAAD Media Awards came out with all the nominations and a lot of our favorite stuff is on there. Um, Winona Earp is on there, the Bold Type is on there. Um, just a lot of great content, a lot of great creators. Um, I'm really excited to see how that pans out. And finally, in personal God, I'm gay. News. Uh, Supergirl returning means the return of Katie McGrath being on my television weekly. Um, so, and it's been just really great. I'm also currently watching Xena for the first time. I know, I'm sorry. And that shit is gay, man. Oh. That is just so, it's just so wonderful. And I uh, am live tweeting as I watch with the hashtags uh, Xena and Virgin Watch. So if you wanna see uh, my feelings on that, go ahead and search those on Twitter. Also, I have done some extensive Fuzzman research. Uh, if you recall, that is the queer lady couple on the Argentinian soap opera Las Estrellas, and I thought I was ready, but I was not ready. It, it is a wild ride, a wild ride, and I'm told I'm not even, you know, not, I'm hardly there. Uh, I was up till 4 a.m. watching, and I cried, obviously because, you know, unrequited love that you keep hidden because you just want this person to be happy. Woo! Yeah. So, uh, I'll link to it below to where I'm watching that with English subtitles. Uh, just a warning, it does automatically play, but it's not always in the correct order. So I went from part nine to like part 13 and I didn't know it uh, Luckily nothing huge happened. So uh, just be aware of that. So that's all I have for This week this last week, I guess um, I Like I said um, Come back for my reactions to Supergirl and Black Lightning and could come back every week for the weekly review of the queerest year of all so go out Make this year queer, live your best life, and spread love.